Well, hey guys, good morning, good morning, good morning. What we're going to be doing today, this is a star unit that I picked up on the uh, secondhand market. I got a real good deal on it. Um, actually, I bought two of them. And the other one I sent to one of my viewers. Um, this one here was manufactured by Star. It was made probably back eh, between 75 and 80. And the reason why I can tell that is, is because Star painted their units. And Magma did away with painting them and just used an anodized finish. And I got a pretty good deal on these. This one here came with the heating base unit, um, uh, which is about 130 bucks. Uh, you know, and if, if you were to buy a brand new star unit, you're probably looking at, you know, uh, $350. Uh, so, you know, for both of them, I ended up, you know, forking out 400 bucks. So that, that was no big deal. I mean, I think I got a great deal on it and, uh, it's just going to expand my bullet making, um, you know, capability. I'm going to use this one for, you know, smaller calibers like nine millimeter, 38 special, 387, um, 30 cal, 32, uh, that sort of thing. And uh, I, I, I'm going to dedicate my other machine, my Magma machine that's already set up with a collator on it. I'm going to dedicate that to 45 ACP. There is a few accessories, though, that you need for this machine in order to make it, you know, almost fu you know foolproof. And uh, just, you know, I mean, all you're doing is just pulling a handle after a while. Uh, one of them is that we're going to adapt today is the air pressurizing system. We're going to get rid of this right here. This is this is um, this this is a spring type coil um, unit that keeps pressure on the reservoir here, which pressurizes the base. And when you go down with a downstroke, there's a momentary uh, valve here that takes the pressurized uh, lubricant that is melted and injects it into the uh, sizing die, which you know puts the lube around your your uh, your round. You know, uh, injects it into the lube groove. So anyway. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to disassemble this. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. Uh, the star unit, you just get this off of there. Now we're going to have to save a few of these parts. Um, this cap assembly, we're going to have to save that. And also the plunger assembly down at the bottom, there is a, um, a seal you know, um, a rubberized plastic seal that we're going to have to go ahead and, and keep as well. There we go. And then you turn the unit upside down here. And as you can see, it's threaded. You know, we got threads there. And you put it down in there like that. And screw it on there. And then you pull it out. Put a little manpower in this. There we go. So there we go. That's the assembly. We're gonna get rid of this spring. We're gonna save this. This is the uh, this is the seal that I was talking about. We're gonna go ahead and take this and adapt it to the bottom of this. Okay. And the the advantage that you have here with with the air assist unit on top is that you'll have constant pressure you don't have to mess around with screwing down 
you know, the pressure on it to keep pressure on the unit. You know, half filled lube grooves, um, you end up having to, you know, redo them. And, you know, you have to end up putting those back down through the machine, you know, to get lube all the way around. But the, uh, the air assist, now that's a whole different story. You know, that, that, that injects that really nice, keeps nice pressure, constant pressure on the, on the lube. Now there, there are those of you guys out there that are powder coaters. And, you know, maybe you might think that this, you know, this video is, you know, geared towards traditional lubing. And I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, there's more than one guy out there that is powder coating and what they're doing is they're putting them down through their star machine and they're adding the lube to the powder coat. And what they're finding out is that their velocities are starting to stabilize and that sort of thing. Now this is all hypothesis. Okay, this is this is this is something that, you know, it really takes, you know, chronograph time to really prove and that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, I don't know, maybe it is something, maybe it isn't. I know one thing, that powder coating, if you have a bore diameter that is larger than what the bullet is casted at, you can actually add, you know, um, thickness to the outside diameter of that bullet and then size it through your star, star sizer uh, to uh, bring that bullet up to the diameter you need. So, you know, it, it really, you know, powder coating really does have, you know, its place to me. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start off on this. i got to get some gloves and everything and get everything ready to go. And we'll be back right after, the, right after I get ready, okay? So, be right back. Well, hey guys, we're back. And, uh, well... I went out there and I took the assembly apart, the spring assembly, and I ended up having to um, uh, grind off the end of the screw because I couldn't get it off. And anyway, so I ground off the end of the screw and it came out. I can get a replacement part; it's no no big deal. So anyway, it just goes to show. I mean, this thing was made back in '75 or '80, so it's been sitting around for a long time. So what you have here is you have the seal assembly, all right? Now this is. Um, this is a two-part thing, you know, um, it's got a washer in there, and you stick the washer down in there like that, okay, and then you just screw it on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and do that right here. Alright. T-handles, man, they're great. Love them. So you, you, you stick that on there and uh, basically you just go ahead and uh, put your, I, I also went ahead and I cleaned this up pretty good. You know, put a little bluing on it, you know, and had a little bit of scratches and whatnot and try to get the rust out of the uh, knurling. So, anyway, I'll stick that on there. Okay, that just goes on the assembly like that. Okay, good and tight. All right, now this right here is the uh, lock washer, and what that'll do is that'll lock the bottom together. This right here, the plunger assembly, and it'll lock it on there. Okay, now what you want to do? Make sure that's nice and tight. Get yourself a pair of pliers for a wrench. It really doesn't take much force, you know, to do this. It's no big deal. So let's uh, stick that on there like that. And what we're going to do is, there we go. Now, there you go. That's a plunger assembly. Just like that. All right. Now, let's go ahead and remove the handle. By the way, I, I, I made a new handle for this out in the shop. Um, went to Home Depot, just went ahead and got a file handle, you know, they're cheap. I went ahead and sanded it down, you know, chucked it up in my drill press and then turned it and sanded it down. Drilled it out 
and then I went ahead and attached a stainless steel rod to that. Turned the rod down so it looks halfway decent. Okay, there you go. And let's stick it right there. Just like that. I'll tell you what, this greatly extends the usefulness of this unit. It really does. This really does do what it's supposed to do. And that keeps a constant pressure on that, which is what you're after. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to adjust that a little bit so it's facing towards us like that. Okay, so there we go. As you can see, let me go ahead and pan up here a little bit. Okay, as you can see, we got the air unit on there. Go ahead and attach the handle. So, so there you go. I'll tell you what these uh, these star units are just you know they're 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 just phenomenal. They're just a great lubricizer. Um, if anybody out there decides to go ahead and start traditionally casting and and lubricating and sizing their bullets, and they just want to go back to that, <coughs> or they're looking for a um, a good lubricizer. You know, you can find these on the used market. Um, you know, you, you know, I've seen them as low as like 200 bucks, maybe for an older one. Maybe it doesn't, you know, it's not all that great looking. But uh, I'm going to have to do something about that. That right there is going to be in my way. Yeah, maybe I'm just going to go ahead and do that instead. All right. So, anyway, um, yeah, like I said, you know, traditionally cast bullets, you know, lubed and sized, um, you know, this is the only way to go. I mean, it really does, it's a real time saver, there's no hassle with it, you don't have to handle the bullets if you've got a collator, you know, and you, you know, Here's the deal. You can go ahead and you can uh, get with somebody out there. You know, I think that uh, measuring grains. I think he has a um, a program in his 3D printer to go ahead and print the, um, you know, to print the collator, and you know you can adapt it to your star unit. And boom, man, you're ready to go. But like I said, you know, doing doing these traditional bullets, you know, it's just a piece of cake. I mean, it's child's play. I mean, you know, dump them in the top, boom, 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 that's it. Got air assist, you know, what else do you really need? I mean, that's 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 it right there, you know, I mean, it's it's great. So anyway, we got the air assist on there, and um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attach the bullet feeder, and that'll be in another video. So anyway, this is Thor's Axe, and I'm signing out.